Well, it's a delight to know that you're still there with us. It's TMI reaching you from the network service of ITV. From Benin, we'll quickly go straight to our first discussion uh, where we are analyzing the NLC protest. Uh, though it's supposed to be the day two of the organized labor uh, protest uh, that has entered the second day, uh, however, meetings and negotiations are currently going on with the federal government and uh, the trade unions to see how to resolve the issue. Uh, let's just see how it turns out uh, in the coming day uh, as um, the Nigerian Labour Congress and the trade union congress leaders, uh, they actually vowed that they are going to go on with the protest which actually started uh, on the second. And this is because the first subsidy has been removed and, uh, and of course this came as the oil workers under the ages of the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association uh, began an indefinite strike on Tuesday. Now, joining us virtually to discuss this segment uh, is Peter SLA. He was born on the 24th of July, 1972. He's an indigenous of Edo State. He's a unionist and uh, was the president of Trade Union Congress, TUC, for two terms from March 2007 uh, to June 2013. Uh, he, he also served as the president of Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pegasus, from April 2006 to 2008. He was acting president of Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pegasus, from December 2000, 2005 to April 2006. Acted as Pegasus deputy president from April 2005 to December 2005. SLA served as a board members of several federal government agencies and parastatus and was one of the 2016 Edo uh, governorship aspirants on the platform of the All Progressive Congress APC, uh, where he tried to just the position with uh, the former governor Adams Oshomale. Uh, he has played key roles in the following sectors of government and private businesses, member of the Subsidy Reinvestment Program Committee, SHOPI. A member of the Constitutional Review Committee, Chairman, Profound Properties, Nigeria Limited, member of the Post's Presidential Election Violence Committee, Director at Trust Fund Pensions, PLC, member of Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, member of National Stakeholder Working Group, and board member Petroleum Product Pricing Regulatory Agency. We can go on and on to give you a resume of our guest joining us virtually. Good morning. Glad to have you, Peter Ayrsele. Thank you for having me. Thank you for taking your time despite your short uh, schedule, the busy schedule. And from the studio here, we have Stephen Osewenge. He's an international businessman, a political analyst. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Very delighted to be here again. Um, thank you so much. And from my extreme left uh, is uh, an erudite legal practitioner, someone who is a civil rights activist. From Benin here, Barista Emmanuel Obakolo. Thank you for joining us. It's a delight being here. Good morning. All right, now let's just quickly uh, give honor to our guest that's joining us virtually. Take us through uh, what are the demands of the TUC and LLC? What are their demands? Nigerians would like to know. Let's just, just walk us through some of these demands and uh, how we are going to come out of this. Yeah, I think some of the demands are very clear. First, uh, they, they want a reversal of uh, the current prices of PMS. They want it to go back, not to pre, not to pre subsidy removal. They just want it to go back to about 500 and uh, where we were before we moved to these new prices of mm. five, uh, it's about 519 in Lagos, 617 in Abuja, 630 in Kano. They want to go back to that. They want government to invest in CNG. Uh, they want wage review. They want the cost of governance reduced, and so many other things. But these are the main block of their demand. And you can look at a lot of placards that were carried. Everybody's talking about uh, not subsidy, key corruption, and the idea of 70 billion going to national assembly members for. There are various challenges in court while uh, you want to share 8,000 naira to the people. So the demands are, are, are much, but I'm just giving you mm. a synopsis of, uh, of what it is. Oh, okay, now, Osewenge, let's quickly come to you now. Do you think uh, with the happenings in the oil sectors, uh, the president is saying subsidies benefiting some set of persons, not the entirety of the country. 
uh, while some stakeholders are saying, mention these names, bring them to book. Instead of just telling us uh, there are persons that are actually benefiting from subsidy, actually. Uh, do you think the president is wrong in a way to come up to tell Nigerians that there are individuals who are benefiting instead of taking action? Thank you very much. For me, um, whilst the, you can see actions on the CBN, uh, we can see a lot of uh, probe being set up. Uh, again, I don't, uh, none of us appreciate what has happened with the issue in court with the CBN. Mm. I would expect the same zeal in the NNPC. The NNPC is the elephant in the room, the cash cow in quotes of uh, the federal government, and the decadence and corruption that we are all struggling with. This emanates from there. I would employ the Mr. President to use the same action of the CBN on the NNPC, because we do know that uh, these big names that are involved in the subsidy, some, they said subsidy was a scam. Is mm. remember the president, president famously said in Eagle Square. Subsidy is gone because, in quote, it's a scam. If subsidy is gone, what about those who have been scamming Nigeria? What are the names of these big people that have made billions and billions? Why people cannot breathe? Mm. I know they said the poor should breathe, but nobody's breathing today, which is why the NSD is on the streets and Nigerians are joining. We need to know who are those that have benefited from mm. this thing so that we can actually recover some of this money because there's no money in the land. People are hungry. It is painful to see that the zeal in the uh, NMPC is not, uh, it is due to, to find out what is going on, what has gone on in the past. Because for me, until we know what is happening, who has benefited in this subsidy that we have all agreed now that is a scam, then we are not really going to get to the root of the matter. Sometimes you find oil vessels being found and set on fire. I think the current administration should please do what you are doing in the CBN in the NMPC. Okay. That is something that would help us. Uh, back below Esquire, help us out now. Some persons are actually of the side of the president. They are saying Nigerians and the trade unions should give him time. He just got into office uh, barely two months. And uh, he actually needs time to sit down and put things in place. Uh, do you think that is uh, a wrong request? Yes, to my mind, that is wrong. Uh, the president never considered any other factor before he made that pronouncement or declaration, as the case may be, with the wave of the palm, that subsidy gone. And immediately we saw the adjustment, the speedy adjustment by different uh, uh, filling stations and others, mm -hmm. those who are in charge or who operate the oil business. Same day he said subsidy country. removal. Few minutes, few minutes after the, the declaration, mm -hmm. we saw that happen faster than the speed of light. So now you discover that, uh, just like my co-panelist here said, uh, these persons that they say have benefited thus far mm. from the corruption of uh, uh, PMS or oil or crude, as the case may be, are they faceless? We've asked several questions. Are these persons faceless? Are they, somebody, are they not Nigerians? And if they are not Nigerians, how do they come about carrying out business or taking businesses of oil in this country. So there are many questions begging for answers. And the, the president and those in charge have vehemently refused to give answer to any of these questions. Mm. So to my mind, uh, I see it as, as, a, as a game plan. I see it as one of the, the scheming that we've seen over the years. They know the persons who have engaged in all of these businesses. Mm. They know the persons who have carried out. Look, there is absolutely nowhere in the world where there is no subsidy where government don't try to uh, see the welfare of the people to ensure that the people feel well. There is nowhere in the world. So if the government now feel that uh, because uh, there is corruption in the oil industry mm. and the only solution to it is to remove subsidy, and we saw it a few days after the purported removal of subsidy, the things skyrocketed again. So the, that goes to tell you that there is something that there is not, they are not getting right. Mm. I ask. Where are the refineries? What has happened to the refineries? We've seen billions of dollars budgeted for the, the, the they said, uh, turn, around. turn around maintainers. Keep That's around. what they try to tell us. And at the end of the day, we keep recycling uh, in one cycle. Okay. And we don't go forward. No, but, with but I, I'll come back to you. Uh, let's quickly get across to uh, Peter Isele. Uh, you've been in the struggle for close to two decades now. And as someone that is a stakeholder and someone that have gotten to the peak uh, in your career in the movement, 
uh, the struggle. Do you think the government is sincere with these current negotiations that are on? Yes, we have to give the government the benefit of a doubt. Now, first thing we need to identify is this is government that is barely two months old. That's one. And then somebody make reference to the refinery in the studio, which is person is very correct about the refineries. But now let's look back to the to how this whole thing started. Because we cannot hold a sixty days old government responsible for for years of over twenty years. We've had civilian we've had civilian administration since nineteen ninety nine. There's never been a time where our refineries have functioned that you say function at optimal level. Even when we had President Obasa and Joe, it was about 10, 20 percent. Then when we now had Obasa and Joe Yara do a Jonathan, the, the 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 refineries were as good as dead. So what you have, even the FCC, which is the fluid cut uh, which is used in cracking uh, crude oil was also in a state of characters. So without the FCC, refineries can function. So when you have that, and you have billions of naira used for turnaround maintenance, and nothing was happening, nobody was held accountable. Meanwhile, salaries were being paid to those workers. And then Pengasin came up and told the government at that time, and said, okay, why don't you do a review of all of this, and let's go ahead and do the NLNG model. The NLNG model means that you have a core operator who is from the private sector, having a certain amount of shares, but you will be responsible for running the refineries, just mm -hmm. like you have in LNG. Government makes billions of dollars every year from LNG as dividend. Nothing happened. Even the, you can imagine the union coming out to suggest that it was even the workers in LNPC that said, if we don't do this with the refineries, are never going to work. And the refineries never worked. Now, Buhari had promised that he was going to build two refineries before the end of his administration. He built none. We didn't see anyone. So, Yes, Buhari, one of in his campaign, said he was going to build refineries, yes, mm. before he was elected. Now, none of those were done. Now, the current protest that is going on by Labour, which of course is protest, and it's done by the law, and then everything is going peacefully, this is what has come out so far. As of yesterday night, the president of Nigeria had agreed that he has made a commitment to Labour that uh, the refineries will come on stream in December. At least one will come on stream in December. Mm. Then he also made another promise that towards the end of the towards the by the end of next week he was going to do a roadmap for CNG, which is one of the uh, uh, demands of labor for CNG rollout, which means this this is the plan. He has to give a timeline to mm. all of this. Okay. And then they will also they will also go ahead to do the best in ensuring that the wage increase is now uh, given a frontal conversation, not just uh, talk and let go. Okay. So now you add some of those commitments. These are some of the things that the workers are asking. So now to, now to December, he has promised that uh, one of the refineries will revamp back. Yes, he's, he's, he's making that promise that between now and December. So we'll give him benefit of a doubt that, mm. okay, fine. Okay, let's wait. December is around the corner. So okay. let's wait and oh, see if that will come up. All right, Osei Wenge. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Quickly wrap up now. We'll come back. Yeah. So on the other side, you also find that if you give this benefit of the I, I like timelines. That okay, I want to achieve this X Y Z. So if the government keep fixing timelines to the achievement, then you can give them time and let's see what will play out. Okay. Now Nigerians are running out of patience. Mm -hmm. uh, some persons are saying they've actually gone through a lot. Uh, as far as the previous administration yes. is concerned. Eight years wasn't that easy. Mm. Uh, how long yes. should that wait? Now, uh, Osawenge, help us out now. Uh, yes. According to Peter Isele, he's saying now to December, we'll have a refinery revamp back. Uh, are you, are you, do you think, For me, uh, you share the same thought with him? Oh, I greeting to my distinguished uh, TUC uh, leader, Isele. Um, thank you for what you said. For me, we have run out of patience. Nigerians are really, really bearing the brunt what of if i ask my comrade what if this whole cng rollout refinery being fixed was done before removing subsidy it would they will have them for if you put the buses available low cost before you remove it why do we always have to now wait for promises we know what promises are they are exactly that promises how about actions on the ground right now people cannot feed people are doing fasting people are trekking they say they renewed the what they call it, Johnny Walker. Everybody is now working. We are keeping mm. feet. 
not because we want to do exercise, but because we cannot afford transportation. The average Nigerian cannot really account for the cost of transportation, cost of food. So these promises are while good. I listened to the president's uh, speech and we all listen. But we've heard all these things. Again, it's a new administration, so mm. it's very fair to say it's new. But we have been going through the same part. This is the APC. Mm. We've been going through this. So let us put things in place before removing the, the uh, bringing the pain. Because for me... So, so you think December is uh, too far? It's too far and there's no guarantees. Well, again, we'll, we'll wait to see. But while we're waiting, please, let us see some action. Let's, let us have food on the table. Let transportation be cut. Let students and other workers be able to enter low-cost buses now. What we need is now. We can't wait. Okay, Obakolo Esquire. Now, the first uh, month after subsidy was removed, the government was able to save about 400 uh, million or so. Uh, don't you think it's a... 400 million, uh, yeah. Uh, don't you think it's a good uh, one in the, in the right direction if they were able to save about 400 million, uh, 400 billion or 400 million now uh, within the first month of removal of subsidy? I don't you think if they still have more time, they will be able to save more money and um, see how to put it back to the economy? Back or less, Squire. Don't think government have a way of uh, telling us... Uh, stories and wanting us to take it hook, line and sinker. But I disagree with that, the government, absolutely. Because uh, for me, that story is like a fairy tale told to an idiot. And uh, I don't want a situation where it will appear that one is uh, too critical, one is too harsh on the government. Would they tell us uh, the government uh, is just uh, barely two months or just a uh, few days after two months? All of those. Government is continuity, for goodness sake. Any person that says, I want to come and rule Nigeria, we want to believe that the person has what it takes to govern us. We want to believe that the person knows the nitty-gritty, those things that he needed to come out. We saw them campaign. They told us so many stories. And now they are in power. Mm. Since, 20, since 2015, the All Progressive Congress have been in power. Yes. So I don't want, I don't want I, I, this is the only country in the world where we give uh, government excuses. Oh, it's barely two months. Before you know, it's four years. Before you know, it's eight years. That we go, another one will come and say, oh, I'm just young. No, government is continuity. They should have done, if, okay, just like my, my, my co-panelist said, if the government had put in place the palliatives before the removal of the subsidy, what would that, what was wrong with that? So, for the government to just, uh, with, a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a wave of the palm, to say, oh, subsidy gone, and so it stands. The government should also say, oh, hardship gone, and let it stand. The people of Nigeria have tolerated. The same businesses who tell us, oh, you should bear, you should be patient to the government. Why we are suffering the hardship, they are busy collecting allocation for hardship allowance. So we saw it with the, with the, with, with, with the past administration. Mm -hmm. So the past administration told us that at least two refineries will be, will be in place before their mm -hmm. tenure expires. That, that and precisely today said. we yeah. have nothing. But we got information how a refinery was built in EJ. Also, one of the, perhaps, one of the refineries that the, the government Dan promised Dangote, Dangote was Dangote Refinery. To so. date, not a drop. But, not but, but, a don't, drop. but don't forget it's a privately owned refinery. And yes, we're made to understand that NNPCL has 20% of it. That's what we are made to understand. So it's what they call PPP. Private public partnership, <laughs> then, which the government have the right to. Then the go the, the, the so-called Dangote refinery, not a drop of where, and the same Dangote refinery was issued a license to import where. What does that mean to you? It goes to tell us that all of these are just mere jamboree. They are just fairy tale told to us. Nigeria is the only country where you can wake up in the morning and you hear one fairy tale. The next day you hear another fairy tale, mm. and nothing is happening. Catalog of promises, none is fulfilled, and the people are busy suffering. Nigerians are busy suffering. Okay. Let me not tell you. We'll, we'll get back to you. Let's quickly get across to uh, as Comrade Esseli now. Uh, we saw a, a kind of show of force where trade union uh, members try to uh, force their, their, their way into the National Assembly complex. And uh, one of the first gates was pulled down. Was that necessary? Well, I think I would say that is unfortunate because uh, I, I don't think we don't condone that and start very high level with the president uh, leading those rallies. I don't think that that's very, very unfortunate and it's unacceptable to have to pull down the gate. Uh, I think uh, what actually came out, maybe some, we also have some of our zealous guys who are part of it. Mm. It has happened, it has happened, but we will learn. I, I, when I got that report, I, we are great, I'm grateful that nobody was hurt, no injuries or no death. So, so I'm, I'm happy about that. But let me also let me also take you back a bit. 
because I like that we speak to facts and we speak to data. Uh, in the first month of subsidy removal, the total allocation to the federal, the total for money that was shared by federal, state, and local government was about seven hundred and eighty-five billion naira, which is one of which is which is one of the best they've shared in a very long time. Mm. And then in the following months, you've had an increase of over a hundred percent in terms of federal allocation. Now, when we look at all of this, we must look at it from the three tiers of government. Our attention majorly is always on the federal government probably because of the way we run our system. Now, the responsibility of cushioning the effect of uh, subsidy removal, I call it, there should, there should be an omnibus plan. Mm. Omnibus plan in the sense that both the federal, the state, and the local government are in the same tra trajectory of wanting to make life easier for Nigerians. I also want us to ask how much is going to the state from the subsidy removal? How much is going to local government? From my own look at, no local government gets anything less than 100 million since subsidy was removed. Monthly. So, yes. So, what you now need to also ask yourself is that local government that is getting this 100 million, what is it doing with it? Let me give you an idea of what labor is actually going after. Because I'm looking at it from the pen gas perspective. Mm. Those of us who are in the oil and gas industry, why are we talking about CNG? A gas master plan was designed by the administration of Good Luck Jonathan. I'm, I'm privy to that. That gas master plan was executed. No, it was not. Nothing was done. It was just mainly on paper. And then that gas master plan, what did the Buhari administration do with it? Nothing. I'm very, I'm very blunt, and I say it the way it is. Yes, I'm, I'm a card carrier member of APC. That does not mean I will say when APC is doing what is wrong. And I'm so, are, are you saying lack of right. lack of continuity is part of exactly. the problems we have? Now, the, yes. There is lack of continuity in terms of policy direction of mm. the various administration. You don't need to say whether Jonathan, President Jonathan, was PDP. But once he has designed a gas master plan, which is in the best interest of Nigerians, the APC administration should have also gone ahead and said, okay, let's see how we do this. We are to do anything about the mm. gas master plan. Then now you have a Tinubu administration coming up and said, okay, I'm going to look at all of this. And let me tell you the beauty of CNG. For example, in those things, you have you have a series of plants coming up about that now. CNG, the, the, the fabrication will create jobs, the maintenance will create jobs, and then the, the dispensing will create jobs. One of the things for me, the only thing I'm interested in, how do you create jobs? And if you roll out this plan for that CNG, it has you, you and I will have a choice. We can make a choice to say, okay. oh, fine. Is that I use PMS or I don't use PMS? Mm. Which of the states is designing a transportation master plan. The federal government will not design a master plan for a Bini city, for example, okay. how you convey people from mm. Opasa Pompa to Uwelu, or move people from Ekoba Hill to Sokomba. No. So that master plan is designed by the state. And so when the state designs those master plans, you now ask yourself, what buses are we using? Uh, you have to also talk to the union. We are not, President Address talked about the fact that 20 seater buses. No. Places like Lagos and Kanu, Rivers, they don't need 20 seater buses, they need 45 seater buses. Okay. CNG. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you. Let's quickly get across now to the studio. Uh, moving on from what he has said, uh, lack of continuity. Moving forward, what should we do? Thank you very much. Um, government is a continuum, and we always struggle here in, in Nigeria and in, largely in Africa with new government coming to do their own projects. I was in Oweri recently, and I, was, I saw uh, uncompleted, very uh, towards the government area, bridge, something that looked like a bridge. And I asked the driver that was uh, my taxi driver. He said, no, this was the administration of Rochas. So that one is now left. Rochas or Korocha. Uh, Rochas or Korocha, the former abandoned. government. It was abandoned. Now we are doing something else. That's going to be applied to almost all the states. We must continue government, irrespective of party, just like our comrade has said. Because Nigeria suffers from it when we restart every four to eight years. It is not fair that you spend money. At the end of the day, the, the ends, another person starts. No. This idea also of saying this, uh, this administration is new, there has to be a long-term plan like the transportation plan, the master plan he's talking about. Mm. Look at if you go to the United States, where I've been able to do business over the years, you have the interstate that connects the 50 states, or uh, the 48 uh, uh, states, I should say. Mm. It is planned over a long term, and it was constructed over decades. Yeah, can you have an interstate that connects every state in Nigeria? Mm. 
I, I was traveling from uh, Potaka to Bini yesterday. You know the hours I spent on between, between Wari and Bini. You won't believe it. There is no road. It's All bad, the places are trucks. Road. Trucks are broken down mm. on the road. You cannot believe that 2023. We are on standstill. This is not right. There has to be a long-term plan that is sustainable. This idea of a haphazard uh, fast food approach to things. Mm. We must have a, a united app. There has to be a, an investment on our road infrastructure. The trucks should not be on our roads. They should either have their own lane or put rails for them. Okay, quickly, uh, Obakbolo Esquire, you know, the role of a labor minister uh, as far as this struggle is concerned cannot be overlooked at this point. Uh, owing to the fact that we are yet to get a labor minister and uh, the labor ministry plays a lot of a uh, role as far as uh, intermediating between the government and the labor unions is concerned. Uh, do you think uh, trade unions at this point, they should shoot their sword and uh, give the presidency time while we have a substantive minister uh, of labor uh, who will assist to ensure that negotiations going forward will be smooth. If the, if the uh, labor union can meet with the president, who is the appointor of the labor minister, mm. and we, we, we are not able to see any result, or somebody tells us something is in the pipeline, is it, is it meeting with the labor minister that will hear the result? In the past administration, we saw a labor minister who engaged in a rancor with labor, particularly ASU. We saw it. Instead of providing solutions, looking for how life could be better for, for ASU members, he engaged them in a different crisis to the, to, to, to the extent that at a point he even hit the, the president of the ASU and uh, that uh, caused a lot of uh, disturbance, mm -hmm. so to speak. But you know, look, go, going above that, I don't think uh, the appointment of a labor minister will be the solution to all of this that we have inherited, mm -hmm. or that this government rather has inherited. What I want the government to do is this. The government should be specific. The government should be serious. The government should be truthful. The government should be sincere. Mm -hmm. Not just to only labor, but also to Nigerians. By the time Nigerians are able to see sincerity, oh, I tell you, Nigerians are people who can easily forgive. And before you know, Nigerians will begin to sing your uh, uh, praise song for that uh, uh, person or group of persons. So the president should stand on his word. Mm. I want to beg him for this. He should be sincere to the labor union and sincere to Nigeria. He should take every promise or promises that he has made serious and follow them up to the latter. So that we don't have a situation where we return back to square one and begin to say, give excuses. Oh, it is, uh, thank God this time around, nobody is telling us that it is a nascent democracy. Mm. We saw that in the first dispensation under the PDP. Before you know, they will call, the government will come up and tell you, oh, it is a nascent democracy. Then in 2015, when the All Progressive Congress came, they said, oh, it was PDP. Mm. Now, the All Progressive Congress has enjoyed also eight years plus. So they are not telling us PDP. They are not telling us that this government is new. This government is barely three months. Mm. This and all of those excuses, we do not need it. I, I, I agree absolutely with what uh, Comrade Peter Esele opined. Mm. You see, continuity. And not just that. There should be sincerity to whatever promise or promises you are going to give mm. to the people of Nigeria. Not now. That we have, I, I saw yesterday on the television that uh, the president promised that uh, one of the refineries, particularly the old Portaco refinery, we begin a production between now and December. Yeah. I, I hope it will not be like what they told us about the Dangote refinery. They told us that by third week of July or first week of August. Going the to but you, I want to tell you that was a mere dream. And I don't want to dream yeah, that dream. Probably destiny time. I don't want to dream that dream it's, because... It's a, it's a work in progress. No, I don't want to dream that dream because I may not wake up from that dream. It's a work in progress. So I want the, the government to mm. be sincere to Nigerians I tell Nigerians nothing but the truth, but not to use the instrumentality of government to deceive Nigerians. Okay. However, mm. we do know that one of the characteristics of governance and democracy mm. is deceit. Okay, let's quickly, we are wrapping up now. Let's come back now to uh, Comrade Peter. As we begin to wrap up, do you think um, the government side, what they promised to give to Nigerians, uh, is it obtainable? All these promises, are they obtainable? Sincerely, let's get your view. Yes, I think the, the, the promises are doable. It has to do with commitment. 
and uh, I also like what uh, uh, Mr. Aldo was told the president in one of his recent interviews. He said, if anybody is uh, acting as a stumbling block to it, fire the person. So, if a refinery is coming on in December, I think that is uh, doable. I'm aware of uh, certain progress that has been made. So, we will keep our fingers crossed to hope that the refineries will come up in December. I also appeal to make life a lot easier for the Nigerian people. It's roll out those buses. Federal, local, uh, federal, state, and local government. Roll out the buses. Subsid subsidize those buses. And let people pay half of the price. Because one of the things, if you go to UK, for example, transportation is heavily subsidized. If you don't subsidize purchases of PMS, subsidized payment of transport, what people are paying for transportation. Mm -hmm. Right now, people spend about 70% of their income on transportation. So the main problem right now is the cost of transportation. Mm -hmm. Take CNG seriously. CNG will, is cleaner. It's clean, cleaner for our environment and it's cheaper. If you are moving a, if you are moving a product from Lagos to Kano, for example, mm -hmm. it, if you are using diesel, it may cost you uh, 3 to 5 million. But I will tell you, with CNG, it's going to cost you less than less than a million to do that okay. and then our environment is cleaner so federal government should renew their commitment to that area of investment mm. why the state and local government make buses available federal government can go ahead and match whatever buses that state and local government are making available and subsidize it to make life easier for people so that they too can breathe <laughs> all right now let's quickly we're wrapping up now we need to take your final take uh looking at what the president has presented to nigerians in his speech uh do you think there's another quicker means that we can get some of this piloting done absolutely thank you very much um, and i thank my comrade what he has said transportation costs is the biggest challenge to everybody i've had food prices i've had businesses etc so my comrade peter Isela is very spot on Government should please today subsidize transportation. And the idea of going to CNG, I think, is a, is a tricky one. Cars how, in Nigeria how, are fuel powered and diesel powered. Mm -hmm. They will not all turn to CNG overnight. Automatically. So let's not just start talking CNG every day on the TV. We need to subsidize fuel powered car prices so that the person where they come up for us today will feel the thing today. This idea of promising CNG, before you know it now, CNG does become the new talk. Everywhere is, is, is fuel, is diesel. CNG is the future. But for now, let us subsidize transport. So that the person that needs to go and buy food in a Kyosa can get there. Right now. Okay, well, you still have the floor. Are you done? No, I just mm. want to quickly say that what government should do today is what affects us today. All right. While promising to, like the common stream of mm. December, Today, let us start seeing those buses. In fact, there are buses already. Mm. Let them roll out to the local okay. government. Let, let's quickly take your reaction now, Peter Isele. Yes. Why, why you see we are talking about CNG? CNG is on right now. They talk about fabrication. In, in, in the previous administration, that's why I said we, we don't do... We, in terms of policies, mm. in terms of documentation, we are a first world country. The discipline to follow through is why we are a third world country. Okay. We don't have that discipline. Mm. If we have that discipline to follow policy through, I, I, I can tell you now, a lot of displacing uh, units for CNG are all springing up. It takes okay. you about 110,000. If mm. government is serious about this, you can also go ahead and subsidize anybody that is ready to do the conversion. Okay, yes. well, we would like to have a special segment where we we'll, uh, really look at uh, the possibility of uh, moving from the normal PMS and diesel to see and you would like to have a special section let's come now to you uh, you've been smiling you wanted to react to this yes. uh, quickly uh, yeah, but we I, need to wrap up now you know one thing one thing about uh, us particularly the government of uh, africa and uh you, we like borrowing uh practices from the western world who and sinker without first sitting down to count the cost this this cng that uh, comrade seller is talking about the conversion from uh, uh, fuel to CNG. It's very expensive. So, when you, a man that has not seen food to eat, and you are telling the man to convert to CNG that it will be better, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to think of that at all. Firstly, it's 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 to it's see, it's firstly, is to see how to make life mm. easier, yes. okay. better for Nigerians. Okay. That should be the first approach of government mm. because they swore to the con uh, constitution mm. to protect lives and property. Mm. And we saw the other day the drama at the National Assembly where somebody was making mockery of Nigerians about the 
uh, let the poor breathe. breathe. That's the Senate breathe. president. So you, you begin to see With all of senators. that because they are enjoying privileges, but they fail to understand that power is transient. That it could be another man's turn tomorrow. Okay. So the government should ensure mm. that life is better. The government should ensure that life becomes meaningful to Nigeria. Because as it is just now, life is meaningless to Nigeria. All right. Okay. We. I'm afraid that this is could, the much. Could we this can, be why people take. are escaping to Brazil through the the stall of of, of boats? Yeah, let's let's not talk about <laughs> Jackpot syndrome now. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, comrade Peter Sele, for taking time to join us. We sincerely appreciate you. Thank you for having me. All right. We hope to have you uh, subsequently on our show. Uh, thank you so much, Emmanuel Obakpole Esquire, for also coming. And, of course, uh, Stevie Nusewenge. You. Uh, you look gorgeous this morning, anyway. Thank you. Well, <laughs> that's the much we can take for the first segment. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, we'll take you through our second segment, where we'll be extracting the presidential speech. Uh, well, a lot of backlashes and have trailed that speech. Don't go nowhere.